Hello and welcome everyone to something a little different. This is my first sit down video and first request video. A uh, subscriber got in touch and put a comment in one of my previous videos asking how I prepare and what I take with me when riding long distances. I thought that might be something useful to uh, some more of you, so uh, why not create a video about it? Now I want to begin by saying this is only what I do. Listen to what I have to say, but take it as guidance only, not recommended advice. I like to be as self-sufficient as possible when I'm out on my bike. Making that phone call to your partner or family member back home, an emergency call saying you've had a breakdown or bonking because you haven't got enough food out with you isn't something that any of us want to do. But if you properly prepare yourself, your bike, and take with you a few essential tools, then that embarrassing moment can be avoided. I like to travel as light as possible, but always carry with me what I need. It goes without saying that you'll need to eat when on a long ride, but knowing how much and when to eat isn't as easy as it sounds. There's a lot of information out there on the internet, but some of it can be confusing. A good starting point is to eat a piece of food every 45 to 60 minutes. I take out with me energy gels and energy bars. You've probably seen them in some of my videos. I like these because they're small and convenient to take out, but they also contain everything your body needs when out on a bike ride. I work out how long I expect to be out. So a 100k ride might be three to four hours. So I need four gels or maybe three gels and an energy bar. Again, it seems obvious, but knowing how much to take out with you can sometimes trip us up. I was caught out during that last 200k ride. I was running low on water and um, it, was, it was pretty uncomfortable for a few miles until I found a shop and managed to refill my bottles. Of course, the amount to take out with you depends on many things. The weather, how hot it is, the intensity of riding you're going to be doing, whether it's an easy recovery ride or you're going to be pushing a little bit harder and your cycle route, whether you're going past shops and cafes and able to refill water bottles, or you're going to be doing a distance where there's no shops, no villages, in which case you'd have to carry more water and be a little more self-sufficient. A general rule I use is to carry 500 millilitres for every hour I'm on the bike. Now a 200k ride might take six to seven hours, so I'd need to carry with me three and a half litres of water. That's not something I want to do, not only because my bike can't carry that many bottles, but also that's an extra 3.5 kilograms. I prefer to use these bottles, they're 800 milliliters, and I'll take one or maybe two out with me, and then I refill them. I plan a route where I know there's gonna be a cafe or a village shop at the correct point during my journey when I'm going to need to fill up these water bottles. Now for short rides, putting just water in these water bottles is going to be fine, but for longer rides, you're going to need to put in some electrolyte tablets like this. Electrolytes are salts that contain sodium, potassium, calcium and magnesium. It's all the stuff that's in your sweat and needs to be replenished. These ones are berry flavoured. They come in lots of different flavours. I, I quite like these berry ones. Um, you just need to look at the directions on, on the packets and see how many tablets you need to add to uh, the amount of water that's in your bottle. Oh, and it's also worth remembering that it's important to drink before you're thirsty, not once you are thirsty. Every 10 to 15 minutes, take a gulp of your drink and um, you should be fine. I think the modern bike computers actually come with a little function that reminds you to take a drink. So it might be worth checking to see if yours can do that. Now tools. Your century ride will be ruined if you have a breakdown and you don't have the necessary tool to fix it. However, as I said at the start, you want to be travelling as light as possible, so carrying your full Park Tools Mechanics kit isn't a good idea. In my mind, I try to think of it as probability. What is the probability of something happening and do I need to carry a tool with me to fix it should it happen? This is where preparing your bike can greatly help. A well-maintained bike will not only run better, possibly faster, but also have less chance of breakdowns. Staying on top of maintenance jobs and checking over your bike before any long distance ride will help reduce the chance of those roadside breakdowns. This is probably something I'll do a completely different video on because it's a, it's a bigger topic than what I want to discuss now, but checking your bolts, uh, cables, chain, tyres for any wear 
uh, will mean you need to take out less tools with you, which is ultimately a good thing. So what do I generally take on a ride? Well, the most common type of breakdown for the cyclist is of course the puncture. Carrying a spare inner tube like this one, tire levers, and a means of inflating the tube, I'd like to use a mini pump, is uh, the bare minimum of what you need to take out. I like to use a mini pump because it can be used over and over again. CO2 canisters is of course an option. It's smaller, lighter, but once they've been used, that's it. What happens if you get a second or third puncture? You're in trouble. But with that in mind, I also take out with me some patches. And there's, I don't know how many is in there, but there's, there's quite a few. So that will allow me to fix the second, third or fourth puncture should it happen on the same ride. And I have the pump to inflate the tube afterwards. Now, some of you may wish to take out a second inner tube with you, which is fine. It's a good idea. I, I do that myself when I'm on longer rides, uh, maybe going somewhere a little further away from home. The Wales ride I did when I uh, did the Devil's Staircase, I, I took two inner tubes with me. You don't want to have a breakdown there. You don't want to be in the middle of nowhere with no means of getting home. So carrying a second tube with you is, is a good idea. But um, touch wood, I haven't had a puncture for quite some time. I, I can't actually remember the last time. But now I've said that, it's, it's most likely going to happen. But because of that, I consider carrying just the one inner tube and the patches as acceptable for most of my rides. I also take out with me both a uh, 4mm and 5mm Allen key. That's because these tools will fit most of the components on my bike. Might not be the same for your bike, so you need to check and see what size you need. Maybe a different head, it might be a Torx fitting. Um, whichever ones you need, you need to make sure those tools are with you. The easiest way to do that is to carry with you something like this. This is a multi-tool. It has various size Allen key heads, it has screwdriver heads, and it also has a chain tool. So if there's a uh, chain failure, I can take links out with this tool. It's a compact size, and I'd recommend taking something like this out with you. You can get smaller ones, which might just have the Allen keys on, and you can get larger ones, which will have cable cutters and knives and all sorts of fancy tools. But get one that has the tools that are required for your bike at the bare minimum. Now in this little bottle is a chain loop. This is something I've only recently started taking out. Um, this bike usually only goes out when it's dry, but over the winter I was out on it and caught in a few showers and found the dry lube that was on my chain had been washed off. And I'm sure you all know what that's like. You get a squeaky chain and as well as being inefficient, it's just annoying. So, um, I decided I'd take a little bottle, this is something I picked up off eBay for only a couple of pence, and put some of the wet lube in there from the, from the bigger bottle, and I, I carry it with me now, so should that ever happen again, I've got this with me, I can squirt on a little bit of this lube, and I'll be, uh, I'll be good to get home again without any annoying squeaks. Right, the next thing I take out with me is a pair of gloves, disposable mechanics gloves. Repairing your bike, especially anything around the drivetrain, is going to be oily. You're going to get messy hats. Pop these on, make your repair, and then you can dispose of them when you get back home. You don't want to be getting messy hands. It usually happens after you put new bar tape on. You get your oily hands and then you, you make a mess of your new bar tape. They're small, they can be squashed up, put anywhere. Not essential, but again, they're pretty handy. Now, we, uh, a speed link is something else you might want to take. It goes with your chain tool. I've never had a chain fail myself. It goes back to, again, um, staying on top of your maintenance. It could also be because I don't have enough power, so um, it's in no danger of snapping. But should it happen, keep your chain tool with you, keep one of these, and then you can do a repair and uh, get yourself home. Something else you might want to take with you, if you want to be certain you can get home should the worst happen, is uh, one of these. It's a rear derailleur hanger. Uh, these are specific to your bike, so not something you might necessarily be able to pick up from your local health. You'll have to do a bit of research and see which one you need. But um, yeah, if your rear mech does come off, you're in trouble. There's probably not much you can do to fix that and get yourself home. But if you've got one of these in your, in your bag, in your pocket, you can pop it on and you, you would get home. Maybe for longer rides, if you're, if you're, again, if you're out in the middle of nowhere, there's no going to be no bike shops around. It might be worth having one of these with you, but I confess I don't normally carry one with me, but worth thinking about. 
Yes, the other two essential items. Of course, the mobile phone. Uh, you probably are going out on your bike and you want to be disconnected from the world. You don't want it ringing and, and getting your emails through, which is fine, you know, put it on silence. But you should have it with you, should anything happen, and you can't fix your bike. You need to make that phone call. You need to get help, don't you? So having a mobile phone with you is important. They're small enough, light enough now to put in your back pocket. You can even get the mounts which go on your bike, like this one, the quad lock. Um, you can pop it on your bars or stem, but um, very important to take out with you just for safety reasons. Next thing is money. Um, having some money with you, some cash or, or bank cards, is not only important should you ride get cut short and you may need to get a taxi or, or train home, but it would also allow you to take fewer things out with you. This is something I do. Um, the long rides mean I should take out, as I said previously, you know, many, many jowls, seven, eight jowls. I don't want to do that. So I, I usually stop for breakfast. You, you quite often see me in the videos getting a sausage back, which is fine. Take some money with you, make a plan, and know you'll be able to stop at a certain time at a certain place. It's worth making sure that they're gonna be open at that time and on that day. But if you know that's happening, you know you're gonna stop there to get some food, refill your water bottles, have a coffee, then that's great. Just plan ahead and you'll be fine. So where does it all go when you're out on your bike? You don't wanna put all that in your jersey pockets. I like to use saddlebags when I'm out on a long ride. This is probably the one I use most often. It's, it's fairly small, but I have several. This is a little bigger. And we've got medium and uh, bigger again, the, the big daddy one. This is maybe one I use on my, um, again, the Wales ride, I, I believe I use this one. Having a large saddlebag meant I could pop it all in there and have and have only a little bit in my jersey pockets, which is a lot more comfortable. But um, as I said, the small ones are usually adequate. You wanna find one which just about carries what you need. You don't want anything too big and have things in there rattling around. You want one that is just about big enough for what you need to carry. The saddle bag is perfect for your spare inner tubes um, and, and extra food. So um, maybe that's something you might want to look into. Another way of carrying things, and this is something I do on almost every one of my rides, is to use a drinks bottle, something uh, just like this one. This has in it the mini pump, um, tire levers, allen keys, patches, gloves, the lube, and I even fit in there some emergency jowls. Um, it's handy to have a couple of extra should you be out longer than you expected, but it also helps keep everything tightly in place to stop any rattles. You can get tool bottles, I believe they're called, which um, will open up and have, have some tools in there. But I, I find just making your own works perfectly well. And like I say, it's something I've done for quite a while now um, to great effect. So have a think, might be something that you could do yourself. Also, if you're gonna be cycling in a group and there might be save several friends, you can share the load out. You don't all need to take out with you a multi-tool if you're gonna be cycling together. You don't all need to be carrying a pump. So maybe one person carries a tool, one person carries a pump. You've got several inner tubes between you. Share the load and it will make everyone's ride a lot more enjoyable. Now, I hope that's useful. Um, I haven't mentioned clothes in this um, video. That's probably something I'll do a separate video on, but carrying extra layers might be necessary depending on, on the weather and the type of riding you're going to be doing. Um, but again, I think that's probably done in a separate, separate video. Thanks to Lydia for asking this question in one of my previous videos. If you have a question or would like some content created, then uh, maybe drop a comment in the bottom of this video and um, see what I can do. I do hope this has been useful to uh, some of you and that you've enjoyed the video. If you have, hit that like button. If you're new to the channel and have seen something you've liked, then hit the subscribe button so you can see uh, any future videos. Next week is stage five of the Tour of Utopia, back on Zwift. That one should be uh, should be good fun. And I have a couple of longer rides planned, I think this month. There's the British Heart Foundation Cotswold bike ride in a few weeks. And hopefully I'll be doing something a little bit longer um, towards the end of the month as well. So um, yeah, again, I hope this video has, uh, has been useful to you all. And uh, thanks very much. I'll see you next time. Bye.